Good afternoon YouTube, this is MTP Flyers and today I decided to shoot outside and use the old uh, H4N as well to see exactly how it works in the, uh, you know, outdoors setup and see exactly what you hear and uh, what uh, winds aren't picked up when the wind blows. Uh, it's a pretty calm day today. But today I'm here to talk to you guys about the Logitech Review which is basically a an Apple TV on steroids uh, is what I like to refer to it as and we're just gonna do a quick unboxing here and then I'm gonna take you guys inside and uh, do the setup but I figured something different for a different product that you guys have you know haven't normally seen for me but um, what this device basically does it allows you to gain access to your Netflix which is what we have seen on the Apple TV and uh, speaking of the Apple TV I do have a video shot for that and uh, I did have some issues setting it up, so I think what I'd like to do is just kind of show you a little bit on that and uh, combine it with this as far as uh, my, my thoughts on it. But uh, I, I will give you a quick run through on that as well uh, in the near future. But when I saw this and I thought how, saw how well it worked, I thought, wow, this is something that I want to get out to you guys. So what is this? Uh, like I said before, it's basically uh, Apple TV on crack. It allows you to gain access to... Uh, Netflix, a uh, number of applications, but what it does that the Apple TV doesn't is it gives you full access to the internet and a bunch of other options that allow you to work along with your cable, whereas the Apple TV just kind of works alongside your cable. You have to switch um, uh, settings on how you do that. You can't access your TV and use the Apple TV at the same time. It's primarily for a media device, but this combines that media device and your TV and how you operate on your TV. So, let's open it up and just kind of show you guys exactly what's in here and then we'll go ahead and uh, move inside. So, basically, there are right now two kinds of these devices and uh, Sony makes the other one and what they have done was they've combined uh, the, a Blu-ray player, which I already have, so there really was no sense in me getting that and uh, the 360 remote to, uh, to uh, interact with a device. What Logitech has done is they've actually gone with, whoops, they've actually gone with a keyboard. And at first glance I thought, wow, a keyboard while I'm trying to watch TV or do any of that stuff. And I went to the store and I actually tried it out. And it wasn't too bad. I, I think the whole idea of the keyboard uh, controlling what you're doing as far as your device goes gives you a lot more freedom and the keyboard is laid out really well uh, from what I've done in early testing at the store or trying out at the store but uh, I'll give you guys a closer uh, look at that. In fact, let's do that right now while I'm talking. Um, the idea of the keyboard is if you start from the right side you see that you do have the keypad or I'm sorry the touchpad kind of give you the mouse. What I felt like right, over, right off the bat this had over the Sony version was the size of the pad and how easy it is and it gives you the ability to click as you're doing it so I think that's a little bit easier but right below that you also have the direction pad the okay up and down when you're going through the menus a home button a back button which is similar to what was on the Sony but it gives you a little bit more room and I think the keys are a little bit more Apple-esque I should say but uh, you know we'll get into what all these other shortcuts do but as you move to the left of the keyboard at the top you have uh, your input, your AVR, your SDB, your TV. We'll get into what all that is. And then uh, as you have the traditional keyboard minus the number pad. And uh, you have, see here, a number of options that are on this. And as we get to the left side is what really I think, uh, you know, also helps make this uh, unique. Uh, the ability to operate your TV, your DVR, your volume, and basically how you handle your TV. So getting a look at that, you see, wow, you know, it, it, it's a little bit different. You're going to use a keyboard at, at, at my TV. So we'll definitely test that out, and I'll let you guys know what I think. So on to the device itself and what it actually comes with. And I actually, <laughs> I think I activated the battery. But uh, the device itself is very simple. You have the, the box itself. And let me just get this out of here real quick, and I'll give you guys a little more... Uh, closer look as to uh, what is on this 
So let's take a look at that now. You have on the back of the device here, uh, going from left to right, you have an HDMI port. I think the, the button on the left side is uh, maybe like a power button or a reset button. We will definitely take a look at that. Uh, at, at first glance, I'm not quite sure what that is. But you have your HDMI in, and next to that you have your IR blasters, which will allow you to control the device when it is uh, not uh, directly in front of you. Um, I have something set up that's going to change how I how I typically do that. So I'll get into you guys uh, get into that with you guys later on. But you do have your HDMI hookups, which allows for a number of different uh, things that you can use with this. Cameras, uh, maybe hook up a computer down the road. I don't know. That's something we're going to have to obviously review and uh, research. Um, you've got your Ethernet port. Now this device also has Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi on this uh, is the standard uh, 802N, uh, I believe, 802.11N. And uh, next to that, uh, you have your HDMI out and your optical drive, and of course, this is a powered device. Now, this device is actually going to work in conjunction with your TV. If you have a cable box or satellite, this will work in conjunction with that as well, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, as far as that goes. So the device is uh, very simplistic, very small. Put that on top of your your TV or if you have a home entertainment center like I do, you have it inside there uh, hooked up with everything. But what can, what comes inside the box, what comes? What comes inside the box you have uh, which is very nice an HDMI cable. It looks like to be about six foot, I would guess on that. We can definitely verify that. Uh, also, you have your plug, your power plug, and your power adapter, as well as the IR blaster. And what that, again, will allow you to do is communicate with the box to your uh, your cable box and, uh, and, and all that good stuff. So that'll be real interesting to try that out. I have something similar set up in my house already, so that'll be real interesting to check out. So let's go ahead and jump inside and basically get this thing hooked up. Okay guys, so we're looking in my messy uh, entertainment center box here, and this is where I keep my tuner, my cable box, and my uh, DVD player. So what I'm uh, doing right now is I'm actually unhooking the cable out to the TV, and uh, I'm actually going to place the Logitech in the middle of that. So what we're actually going to do is take the HDMI, which is coming from the TV, and we're going to place that into the out of the Logitech box and of course at this point I'm plugging in the HDMI in and that is coming from the cable box itself so essentially we're going HDMI out from the cable box to the HDMI in of the Logitech which in turn goes out to the TV and right now I'm just taking the plastic off of the IR blaster and there's a little unique I uh, setup I have for this and I don't know if anyone else has this or not but as I plug that in um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually run the power cable here through the mess of wires. Um, but the good thing about the, the IR blaster that I have there is I have a uh, sensor on my TV, which is across the room, and which allows me to run, would allow me to run a wire as I plug the cable in there for the power, which will allow me to run a solid cable from the TV through the wall downstairs, and then I actually have a sensor that uh, allows me to place on the door to contact with the uh, cable box. So what I'm going to do is put that IR blaster right there. And as I spin the camera around here, you'll see the little eye that sits stuck right to the door. So that allows me to communicate from the TV to the box, and can, uh, I can connect with everything and control everything in there. So let's get to the setup. Okay, guys, so we are here in front of the television, and I've plugged everything in. And of course, as I'm doing that, I'm realizing that it's booting up. So you missed the Logitech review screen, not really that big of a deal. So right now, we are looking at the uh, screen that's going to tell you to turn on your keyboard. Now, earlier I had, uh, going over in the unboxing, there was that little button down at the back. That is actually the pair button. You can see down there, if you're having issues, switch the power off and turn it on again. Or press the pair button on the back of your review, which is that star. So we are going to... Turn us on, and then we're going to see if, yeah, there you go, see so you can locate the mouse there, 
and that is me using the trackpad on here. So I'm going from the bottom of the TV, the corner of the trackpad, to the top in one swoop, and it's very controlled. I can go past the OK button, and the reason why I say that is because I tried that with the Sony, and uh, it was about three or four swipes to the, get to the corner of the TV that was there. So there is no double tap on the on the keypad. It actually is a hard button. So once you click OK, it's going to bring you up to the next device, which tells you how to use your touchpad, the back button, the arrow keys. And once you click Next, it is going to take up to 20 minutes. It includes uh, maximizing your screen area, connecting to the internet, signing in your Google account, setting up your TV service, and setting up your TV and AC control, uh, AV controller. So in four steps, uh, we're going to, you'll push each side of the Google TV screen just barely over the edge of your TV. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then what we'll do is we'll do the up. All right, and there we go. Click next and see what we got here. Maximize your screen area. You should be maximized. If you still see blue, start over. No, we're good. All right, we are going to do this wirelessly. Um, I did want to hook up Ethernet, but I don't have a cable long enough uh, to hook to the t thing to just set it up now. So we'll see how well the wireless is. Now, right now, I've uh, Michael Mana did have some issues connecting to his internet through here. So we'll see if we have the same problem. His would actually freeze and restart. So we'll see if we have the same issue here. And I'll, I'll take this step sort of slow since it seemed to be a bone of contention uh, with Michael over there. So it looks like it uh, connected right away. So we're going to go right to my network itself. We're going to click the OK button and then we're going to put my password in, which I hope I remember what it is. I haven't logged on in a while. Click next. Connect to the network. So that did go a lot faster than Michael's. Let's see if it's eh, there. It is. It's connected. So Michael, I guess I'm not part of that three percent. I had no problems. Now this is a uh, system update. I'll let this uh, do its thing, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. It looks like the download's complete. It's just verifying, and. Uh, all right, so we're good to go. Uh, what we're going to do is select restart and install. Maybe the install is what takes the time. Okay, guys, I'm going to start this up right here. As you saw that beginning there with the Logitech. And it just flashed a couple times uh, while I was waiting. Didn't take all but maybe four or five minutes for it to go through the entire process. So that wasn't too bad at all. And I'm guessing this is where we will see the menu here. And I can honestly say this has been a very pleasant setup. Uh, a lot better than what I went through with the Apple TV. And it's just connecting to the network now. I don't know if this is something that it does. Now, I notice up there at the top it is still 5 of 12 setups. So we'll see exactly what else we have to do as far as getting through that. And it's checking for updates again. Uh, obviously, it just did the update. So. It's probably just going through the motions, and uh, we'll let it do its thing. We're up to date. We're going to go ahead and click Next. And my Google account, as everybody knows, is MTP Trivia. At gmail.com. And the password and the password is password. I think that's the password. I change it so many times it's not funny. All right. Welcome me. And uh sure why not, right? I mean, I want them to be able to make it better. This is the licensing agreement, which nobody reads. Quinn put a good statistic up that people typically read the license agreements or agreements for anything for an average of 
4.2 seconds. I am 19026, good old Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. What this portion is doing, as you can see there, is so it knows where I'm at for setting up my cable box and all that good stuff. So depending on your setup here that you have, uh, I am going into a cable box. So uh, that's basically my choice. You may have a setup where you do not have a box top, but that's up to you. So we're verifying input. Select next if my TV is playing. It is playing. So we'll select next. My lineup provider is going to be Comcrap. I mean Comcast. And you know what? Uh, I have to check that. Give me one second. Okay. I have DHC 3416 which doesn't look like it's on here not on this list it is Motorola and I am DHC dash 3416 which is located on the front of my box as well as the back Whoops, it's actually DCH3416. That's correct. That's adding my device. So this is nice, even though they don't have the one on there, it's going to set everything up and get that all ready to go for you. So there we go. Uh, I received CNN. ESPN and USA. Uh, I have HBO. No Showtime, no stars. Oh, wait, I do have all that. Never mind. Uh, let's go ahead and... What is this? Search channels. Parent channels selected. Here, we'll go ahead and... Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, we're good. That's everything we have. Premium channel selected 51 of 89. Ooh. All right. Uh, it looks like it's everything. In demand, sports. No, no, no. Don't have any of that. All right. So we're good. All right. So we're going to click done. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going through the same thing again. We might be doing the same thing. Oh no, yeah, this is the same thing. Uh, I think I'm redoing the... Yeah, we're just going to go back. We did this already. I think this is if you have more than one. Whoops. We're going to skip this. Alright, well, you guys know that I did this. I'm a little nervous as to why it's asking me to do this again. We'll try it one more time. We know that maybe it adds it to the list now, and you have to do it over. No? We'll go down to Motorola again, and we'll do DCH-3416. Yes, that is correct. Maybe it'll tell me I already set it up. This is our first hiccup. I'm not sure if it's, you know, trying to do more than one. I don't know why. There only is one. Do I receive such channels as... Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Search channels. I guess we'll... Customize your lineup using the list to the left. You can... 
search all by sign channel number left to receive premium channels you know what let's try something here so what's it want me to do uh I really want all those channels. Right? I mean, you know what the cool thing is? It lets me do the two fingered swipe down on the on the mat on the pad. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and click done for now? Okay. Now, uh, right, here we go. Now I'll have to go back to that and see if that's something that I messed up. You can now use review to control your TV, change your TV channels, access your channel guide, and access your DVR, which I do have a DVR. Um, the Logitech controller in your hands can be used as a remote. To do so, you'll be asked to provide a brand and model number for your TV. The original TV remote is sometimes needed to complete the step, so keep it nearby. I do have it nearby. All right, we have a Sony. My model number is on the back of the TV. Oh boy, this should be fun. Uh, bu, 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 bu. I believe I am KDL-40 XBR1. I think I'm XBR1. That's correct. Which input on your Sony is connected to the Logitech review? Uh, I believe we have... We're hooked up to 7. That much I know. You can use your Logitech review to turn it off, blah, 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 we know that. Um, I don't have an AV receiver. We'll skip that step. Yes, we know. We're good. And I think we're in like Flynn. So, guys, there's the setup. And uh, we'll just do a quick look-see around. I don't know how much of that you you will have seen, depending on how long it was. You probably uh, could care less about it all being set up. It's pretty much self-explanatory. So there's the beginning. Congratulations on setting up your new Logitech review. Now for the first time, you can easily search and find just what you're looking for across your TV, the web, apps, even the media on your home network. Use apps like Pandora and Netflix. Features like Dual View and optional accessories like Logitech TV Cam. Review makes your home TV once again the center of all your entertaining experiences. Welcome to the future of entertainment. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, we know that already. There's your search button down at the bottom left corner. There's my... I can set those up as universal remotes. I'll do that later. There's the picture-in-picture, uh, -picture, which is pretty cool. Menu. And that's it. So, guys, there we go. Let's go to live TV. And I am not in there, so we're going to escape out of there. Look at that, I actually hit escape on my TV, on the keyboard, and it went out. That's amazing. If I click guide, it's going to my guide. Oh, this is amazing. So, are the Eagles winning right now? Not that I care all that much, but I'm basically controlling the entire TV from my remote, or from the, from the uh, keyboard. Now, I hit DVR, I can go to my recordings on my DVR, and I can actually go into, that is awesome, absolutely awesome, everything that I have recorded, hit DVR again, 
go back out, hit escape, takes you back out to the game. Now this is the part I'm really excited to try, the picture in picture, which will allow you to go into your Google TV or review and do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's uh, a most visited uh, spotlight queue for your uh, uh, podcasts. Now, that's interesting. You can check this. This is a pretty cool feature. You can do what's on and basically search for anything that you're looking for. Let's say you just sit down and you're like, I want to see what's on TV. They will actually tell you everything that's on at the moment, channel it is, and how much time is left. So let's say we were looking for, uh, you know, let's say we were looking for football, right? Everything on here, wow, there's a lot of stuff on here. Of course, it is Sunday. There's a lot of sports going on. So let's let's say we were looking for the NFL red zone to go through the scores and whatnot. There's an hour and 43 left of the red zone, which in this case will take us to that. Now I can go to the HD version that Comcast uh, throws me to if I want to. So this is actually a red zone, which happens to be covering the Eagles game right now. So if I want to click back, I can actually go back to that. And it will allow me to do that. Now, if you notice, the, the show is not on. So if I hit back again, or escape. No. So what I basically did was killed my feed to go into this information. So I guess one important thing to do is if you want to go back into it, you're going you're gonna to go ahead and uh, hit the picture in picture to get back to what you were looking at. So... We'll go to there, and the Eagles just went ahead. Good for them. All right, so if I hit the picture and picture again, it takes me back to where I was, which is really cool. Once you get back, then you can hit the back button and then go back to your information. So it took us right back to the channel. We'll do the picture and picture again. And uh, what I'm really interested in trying out is, you know, the Internet, see how well that works. So we're going to go to YouTube. And it's actually going to take us to the YouTube website, not a a simulation of it, not a you know, not a uh, a, a half-ass attempt of it. Uh, would you like to try YouTube Lean Back? Uh, no thanks. Get right on there, and we'll click OK. So they do give you a little bit more of a different option on there, but I'm hardcore. I like to see everything how it is, and. Uh, Let's, uh, okay, let's go to search. Have you ever noticed just how hard it is to find cat costumes on Halloween? All right, we don't want to do that. We actually want to go to, yeah, there we go. So if I want to go to my channel, I'm going to sign in. Actually, what we can do is we can just click right on here. It's nearly impossible. So today I'm going to show you some quick and easy costumes that you can make at home. Amazing. You can pause, go back up to what you were doing, and we'll type in MTP Flyers. 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 And that should bring up my, what you're typically used to as a search. There you go. And we can go and click on that. And we'll click to my channel. moves okay you know it's not it's not what I am used to on the Mac but there you go there's the channel that's interesting and like I said there is the uh, there's the ability to two finger swipe down through the channel there which is really sick I think and uh, you can go into and you know watch your watch your videos which is pretty cool so there goes my video right there. We'll stop moving the page up and down. There it is loading. This is a seven minute video. And honestly, I don't think it's loading any slower than my computer. Even the advertisements come up. Alright. So you guys get the idea. There it is. We want to go back to the menu. We're going to go ahead and click Home. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen there. 
and we are set back to what we want to do now I do have Netflix which I will be setting up on here which is another reason why I am interested and this you have applications which you can go to and something else I will be setting up also are the uh, Twitter and uh, I don't know if Facebook's on here or not but uh, here's your settings and this will allow you to go into your network your TV source input devices so you have the ability to make a few more changes on there. And I notice there's some stuff down there. And uh, there's search applications, accounts, and sync. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the picture in picture. And then we're going to go back home. There we go. So we can hear the game back there. That's the other feature. If you're watching the game and you go into this, you see how it's still kind of playing in the background, which I think is pretty sweet on there. I absolutely love that. So... If you don't want to do the picture in picture, you can at least hear the game on what's going on behind you in the background instead of it down in the corner because it may affect what you're looking for uh, in, in a menu. For this instance, we went to settings and our stuff was not showing there because of the picture in picture. So you can at least see what's going on in the game, on the TV show, whatever the case may be. So, guys, I think I have spent enough time with you doing the basic uh, look see through here. Uh, there is one other thing I do want to show you, uh, and that's going to be the uh, spotlight, which will allow you to basically search for anything that you want uh, via the TV uh, or via the internet. So uh, one of the things that I think uh, you typically go for, like if you're looking at the uh, Eagles game, we'll type in the Eagles, or you know what, what was this? What we'll do, we'll go Philadelphia. And I spelled it wrong. You notice... Much like Google is now, it's giving the autofill as you're typing, it's searching. So, there's the game right there that you can go right into if you didn't know where it was at. You can actually search the web. You can do more results. Oh, I hit more uh, search search the web so there you go you're in a Google search search in the web you have a little feature down there you notice the blue line it's changing I'm hitting down and it's actually a little square box to the left of the searches I don't know if you can see that here or not but that's allowing me to that or you have your mouse where it changes so depending on what you're comfortable with what you want to do that's amazing now I can also sign into my Google page here as well to do that so I'm amazed hit home go back to what I'm looking at I have the website running behind me let's say I want to get back to the game I'm gonna hit escape hit escape or you know what I could probably just hit live TV on there I don't know if there's a shortcut for that but we'll go ahead and yeah you hit there's the, the TV button at the top of the keyboard I'm gonna have to do a keyboard look at this as well with you guys but that's it so far, guys. I'm extremely impressed. Setting up was extremely easy. And uh, the Google TV, Google Review, I'm sorry, the Logitech Review uh, with Google TV is just uh, so far pretty cool to me. Pretty cool. So we'll do more on this. And, uh, of course, I want to compare this to uh, the Apple TV as well. But in my opinion, being able to watch TV and do the searching at the same time, uh, in my eyes, is already one step up on, on the Apple TV. So, guys, this is MTP Flyers, saying you have a great afternoon, and uh, I'll talk to you later. See ya!